Hi everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome to Digimon Seekers uh, Chapter 4, Part 12. So this is the last part uh, of Chapter 4 for Digimon Seekers. As a quick reminder, March 9th, this next upcoming Saturday, uh, will be the epilogue. So out of the main story, the main narration will be over. We'll still have one more little piece uh, to conclude and wrap up the story. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the first quote. Um, so, witness, yes, witness the product of death, of death X, oh, excuse me, I'm glad I double checked, that's not the first quote, <laughs> excuse me, uh, the, the, the changes to Dorogoromon's body were dramatic and terrifying, Fenor Logomon and Kurochimon took to the air, the former slashing with the Hellfire Blades on their legs, the latter with their lightning swords, Professor Wuzunji's massive download from the source Digimon distended the dragon's body into a lost all shape and form, resembling a wriggling head of liquid. This feels just like the time we digivolved into Hell Logomon, doesn't it? It's like an experiment gone wrong, Eiji said of the rolling mass, rolling mass below. It looked like the result of some misbegotten genetic engineering. The data dump melted into the, uh, the data dump melted into the gigantic mass, slowly coating it in static and other visual noise. It was rebuilding itself, mutating into something similar yet entirely alien. A new type of Digimon and an ale omen. Professor Rujinji named the abomination Dex Dorogoromon. So continuing with what I said at the last part of the previous video, I was complimenting Seekers for its use of cosmic car, Lovecraftian har, uh, but I believe I was a little bit being, I was being a bit too gung ho because uh, we mustn't forget, uh, or I mustn't forget that this was that those elements, those themes, was also included within Digimon Tamers, the uh, final uh, antagonist for Digimon Adventure Try, and even elements of it was present through Professor Kuroda and his uh, body har. Uh, aspects of uh, combining with Digimon within Digimon Savers. Um, I, but I would, I would definitely say that Tamers has the most element of cosmic horror. But despite that, I would still play Seekers below Tamers. Uh, again, it might just be myself personally as a reader. But when I read those portions, especially like for example, um, let me quickly find it. Uh, the rolling mass below look like some uh, result of some misbegotten genetic engineering. Where is the specific part, the distended part? Here we go. Uh, downloaded from the source Digimon, distended the dragon's body into lost all shape and form. It just sounds like a bodiless mass. And I've read other uh, literature concerning that, like from <clears throat> Edgar Allan Poe and uh, The Shroud, I believe it's called. I can't remember the name of the author right now, but just about this, this mist that transforms individuals into, the, it transforms their bodies. Um, so yeah, so I just want to quickly pick up, excuse me everyone, that was my cat, she's on the side, she just knocked something over. I just want to quickly point that out because I think that's very interesting and I really appreciate whenever Digimon does embrace that, that cosmic horror side of itself because I think it does a really uh, intriguing and engaging job with it. Like for example, when Godomon and Miyakomon from Digimon Adventure Try, I suppose minus Protoss, excuse me, uh, when they turn into, I forgot that one Digimon's name, but uh, that it looked like from um, Neon Genesis Evangeline, uh, uh, I can't remember her name specifically, but the one that's usually portrayed with Shinji Ahsoka, the one in red, and this character, she usually wears white, and I believe she has white. Oh, Rei, Rei. She looked like Rei, kind of, at the end when everything uh, reached its climax within uh, Neon Genesis Evangeline. Anywho, uh, and also a little bit um, from Digimon Adventure 2, the beginning, right? That, that I forgot the, that Digimon's name as well, but that new Digimon, the way that he engaged uh, with this partner with other people, right? And I won't say more in case one hasn't seen it, but there's definitely elements of dark horror right there, cosmic horror right there as well. And I personally just really love it when Digimon uh, goes full steam ahead with that kind of theme uh, within its story. Additionally though, uh, one might be noticing that for Dexter Goromon, I'm not using they, them. I usually try to use they, them for the Digimon. Uh, I, I will be using it. And the reason being is because even the story itself possesses this question, um, is Dex Gurumon, is, are they, are, is it still a Digimon? Or is it something else entirely? Uh, personally, I just really like that theme, so I'm going to maintain it. So hence, one may notice that I'll be using again it instead of they, them for Dex, uh, Dex, Go, Dex Gurumon. Uh, but it's for a specific reason. Hopefully, that makes sense. Let me make sure. Uh, oh, and the last element that I like about this quote is that I like that, that connection to the previous part where Logomon turned into Hell Logomon. For me, it just, again, as always, it just highlights how E.G., <clears throat> he's always astute, he's always picking up on minor details that allows him to come up with conclusions or that allows him to compare the present to the past in order to maybe formulate a new plan, from, or maybe not formulate a new plan, but to uh, edit a current plan or just to uh, minor research what empirical evidence E.G. has discovered to help use that from the past, that information from the past, and use it in the present fight. 
Uh, so as always, I just like any detail that highlights that EG is not a stupid individual. So going to the next quote, we're in the product of death x evolution. I've used data from the source Digimon as a reference to force Dorogurumon into one last evolution, creating Dex Dorogurumon, the Digicore Predator. Death x evolution, Predator, the thought caught to EG's mind images of the apex predators, wolves, lions, orcas, the eaters, and an eat or to be eaten world. A Digimon that eats other Digimon, Leon said in disbelief. Before either of them could uh, before either of them could get another word out, Dexter Grumon began flapping on ten of its wings, creating a torrent of damp, sickly air that swirled around the source domain. For some reason it caused Eiji to recall the loss of his beloved dog. Cancer claimed it in the end. Uh, Clancer claimed them in the end. It was uh, they were the same age as Eiji when they finally passed, which meant they lived a good long life in dog years. Uh, he knew it was time when the poor pup stopped eating. He recalled his parents' surprise that he was the one most devastated by the dog's passing, especially since his mother had been so fond of them. The memories were also clear. Eiji knew at once that just like his aging, suffering pup, Dex Durgurumon was rotting from the inside. He could smell it in the air. Um, so <laughs> I'm not going to lie to that. So right, let's continue with that theme of Cosmic Heart, a uh, line that I really came to appreciate. And actually, I forgot to mention it from the previous line as well. Let me quickly go to it. Uh, they they said this theme, this diction before. Uh, the data dump melted into the, the data, sorry. Let me start over. The data dump melted into the gigantic mass, slowly coating it in static and other visual noise. Just that use of visual noise, uh, for me, it creates something a little bit uh, well creepy, something a little bit. Uh, out of this world, and then when we go to this other line right here from the pre uh, from the present quote, um, uh, began Dex Durugumon began flapping on ten of its wings, creating a torrent of damp, sickly air that swirled around the source domain. That kind of language and diction, <laughs> again as a reader, I just it really conjures a lot of cool imagery in my mind. And I just really appreciate that um, the writers are, are, are really sticking to the guns in terms of this theme. But that's just a minor element. Other, is, other parts of this quote that I really appreciate is, of course, um, this personal connection that E.G. is doing to uh, Dexter Gurumon in his own life. So as I said in the previous part, right, how E.G. is able to look at past situations and the, the uh, information that was present there, he's able to pick up on that and use it for the current time. Uh, the current present uh, issue or context that he's currently working on, correct? So to reiterate, essentially for EG, again, the reason why I'm not calling Dexter Gurumon they them is because uh, is this really a Digimon Digimon or is this an abomination that was created by a human being being uh, that human being being Professor Ruzenji? And so having this connection between Dexter Gurumon and this dog who was dying of cancer. So the last portion, uh, EG knew at once that just like his aging suffering pup, Dexter Grumon was rotting from the inside. He could smell it in the air. <clears throat> in other words, I would argue, so in case one is unaware of cancer, unfortunately, mm, that's what it does to the individual. It, it, it corrupts the cells and prevents these cells from being able to, to uh, oh, it's subject to rebirth and continue doing what cells typically do, right? They just die. Uh, so thus, when E.G. says that he could smell the rotting coming from inside his dog, he, uh, I would argue that he's saying that his dog was dying. He was nearing the time uh, for him to finally pass on. So how do we apply that to Dex, uh, Dex Dorogurumon, who I would argue the story is trying to put forward that currently it's no longer a Digimon, uh, but just a husk of itself. And the fact that it's rotting from the inside, although E.G.'s dog was still alive, cancer is a unique uh, process from the natural world that really just devastates the body. Um, and I would argue that even after one has passed away, unfortunately, because uh, the neurons and cells are still at play for a little bit, and cancer is still present a little bit. Hopefully that makes sense. So thus, even though Dexterogrumon <clears throat> is a husk of itself, it's now a corpse. The fact that it's still rotting from the inside, I, I, I believe is meant to conjure for the reader this image that unfortunately dorogrumon has been used to the extent that they're now dead. And now even in death, they're still being used, they're still rotting from the inside. And again, uh, that's a very sad conclusion. And I hope that for a very sad fate for Dorogurumon. <clears throat> and I do hope that this is not truly the end for him because him and Koski, I don't believe, uh, deserve that end. But yes, yeah, so hopefully what I just did, it makes sense. And um, I do really love this connection that EG brings up with this dog. And I think it's a cool way to, again, emphasize EG as a character, but also add some emotional points as well. 
uh, that Eiji is an individual who keeps in mind not just himself, but other beings as well. Not just other humans, but other non-humans too. Be it from the past, his dog, or be it in the present <clears throat> with Digimon. Um, but yeah, continuing forward to make sure that's everything I want. Um, then I guess, yeah, again, the, to reinforce what I'm saying about Dexter or Gurumon, Death X Evolution. A witness the product of Death X Evolution. Data from the source Digimon as a reference to force Dora Gurumon into one last Digivolution. So that use of the word force is not a natural part of the digital world, nor the natural world. Uh, the professor is forcing this poor Digimon uh, into this current state. Um, but yeah, moving forward. Fascinating. Do you see what's so special about this Digimon Niji? Professor Rujinji asked, as though he were running a lecture. Eiji struggled to formulate an answer and was further interrupted by a wave of data that washed over his virtual monitor. The vast majority of the fields in the analysis sheet were filled, uh, were filled in as unknown, <clears throat> but thermal imaging picked up some unusual signatures. Are those digicores? That thing has multiple digicores inside it, Eiji put it out. Exactly so. Very keen eyes you got there, Eiji. Now, why would one Digimon contain multiple digicores, Leon? Dex Doragurumon may be, may be based on Doragurumon, but that's no longer Tadara's partner Digimon, Leon shouted, trying to comprehend the situation as much as answer the question. <clears throat> Neither he nor Eiji noticed that Koski lost consciousness as a result of critical error in Doragurumon's Digicore leading up to the Death X evolution. What did you do to Doramon? Eiji demanded. Doramon's Digicore is safe. Its major functions have been paused, aside from powering the interface at its head, the professor explained. If, it's nothing, if, it's, if it is to be nothing more than a vessel, what need does it have for a personality? Why, uh, why its personality might even be a vulnerability, a hindrance. That was how he'd done it. So, I, again, I believe this passage does confirm that unfortunately Dora Gromon is no longer the Dora Doramon that we came to uh, love from the beginning of the story. And for those who were aware about Doramon before the story, oh, this is a different kind of Digimon, one that's been corrupted and tainted uh, by the Dex X evolution. And then also this confirms as well that unfortunately uh, all, personality and all personality and individuality that was present within Doramon is now gone. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that Koski is in a form, or maybe he is in a form of a coma, like a minor coma. Uh, it's because if the consciousness of one's partner gets taken away, I feel like that will have a great impact on the other partner as well. Um, but maybe we'll get more information about that during the epilogue. Uh, but again, to reiterate, I do feel extremely bad for Doramon. I feel like he's definitely suffered the most. Oh, well, Saya did die, of course. But at least Saya can rest in death, if that makes sense. I don't mean that in an edgy kind of way. I mean that no one, well, not entirely true, right? Unfortunately, the professor was um, not belittling, but um, disrespecting the memory of Saya. But he wasn't doing anything physically with her. Well, actually, <laughs> the footage that he had with the body, did actually keep her body. Uh, never mind, I take that back a little bit. So he might be doing some physical stuff with her. So let me rephrase that. At the very least, Saya, she is able to rest in death, as in her consciousness is not being affected by all of this. Her consciousness is not able to see what her dad has become, and her consciousness is not able to see what her partner, Digimon, Black Agumon, if it did become corrupted, if they did become corrupted, corrupted in the same way that Doramon has, um, she's not able to, to witness all of that. I would argue that's some form of peace in its own way, even though one is dead. But for poor Doramon and Koski, an extension as well, um, the fact that they're conscious while going through all of this, especially Doramon, I think uh, it's a really sad fate um, for them. And I'm really hoping that they'll be able to get a different fate other than this. Um, anyways, but... Uh, so the fact that this Dex Doramon uh, has so many Digicores, again, I think it highlights the fact that is this Doramon? No, it's not no longer because it has multiple, uh, I would argue Digicores could be symbol uh, an an analogous or uh, a synonym for the Digicore uh, would be uh, So. The fact that the Digimon So is able to connect with the human and work together. Uh, the fact that this Dex Doramon has so many Digicores or multiple quote-unquote So's this means souls, hearts, minds, everyone wants to view it. This would mean that, again, the individuality that was Doramon is no longer present. Now they're being forced to share the vessel that is his body with these other Digimon. But uh, it's looking like his consciousness is not alive. Hopefully that will be the best case scenario for poor Doramon. <laughs> I've already know stories where, <laughs> uh, well, even in video games, right? Like I think we have mentioned this like in The Last of Us or <laughs> Half-Life with the head crabs. It looks like at first um, their victims are not alive, but one, there's the minor details and 
uh, world building that suggests that the victims are indeed not only still alive but also conscious as they go through the changes that the body is going through. So I'm really hopeful that that's not Goro, uh, Dora Goromon, that he, they have now just fully passed away. Or hopefully the next time we see him will be after he comes, uh, comes hatches from a Digi Egg, a Digitama, excuse me. Um, but yeah, uh, then as always, I like how EG and Leon are working together. EG is the one that's able to pinpoint, oh well, there's multiple Digi cores within this Digimon. And then it's Leon who's able to state, um, or where, where is it, give me a second. Um, Oh, and then it's Leon who's able to confirm that it's no longer taught of his partner, Digimon. So, as always, I'm a big fan of teamwork, and I like how EG's knowledge is working in hand with uh, Leon's knowledge. And, uh, and yeah, so that's everything I want to discuss about that quote. The professor really did, though. He's really shocking me. Again, the way that was how he done it, and why did he do what he did to Doraemon? Uh, he removed his personality just because it might prove to be a hindrance or a vulnerability. And uh, again, I'm, I'm not the happiest with how the professor's the antagonist, but at the very least, I do have to give them credit for him fully embracing his villain status. <laughs> at least he's not tiptoeing or being the reluctant villain. He's just fully embracing it. Oh, and actually going back, one, one of the, thank you so much. One, one, of, one of the viewers made a, a left a really interesting comment. Here I am showing sympathy for Koski. Uh, I don't mind showing sympathy for Doramon because I, I do believe, uh, besides the whole rebellion that he wanted to do, they wanted to do. Uh, I think they were innocent, but a, a commenter points it out that Koski is a lot like the professor, and even Saya pointed it out. Uh, pointed that out as well. Uh, so maybe I shouldn't have as much sympathy towards Koski, because if and if anything, if Koski was allowed to, who becomes something similar uh, that the prof that the professor has become. Or at the very least, the capacity to do what the professor has done, the capacity to become what the professor has become, that's also present within Koski as well. So that was a great point. Uh, that they left in the previous video, oh, the second to previous video, I believe, and I wanted to point that out. Uh, thank you so much to that viewer. Um, I don't believe th their name is like user with multiple numbers. If I'm wrong about that, please do forgive me, but I do appreciate your engagement and that new perspective that you did offer me. So <laughs> let me rephrase my statement. I do feel bad for Doromon, um, but maybe not as, math or not as bad as Koski. He may be witnessing the consequences to his actions. I mean, Yolene did warn him, right? So <laughs> anyways, uh, continuing forward. Digimon were only supposed to have one Digicore each. That was common knowledge. If this monster had Digicores running along its spine, lined up in the spots between the wings that protruded from its backside, collectively, they appear to function as an additional Digicore. The Death X evolution offers Dexter Grumon new life as an undead type, a Digimon that survives by making use of the Digicores of others. A zombie, you mean, E.G. repeated. Visions of zombie flicks and games danced through his head. Undead corpses that bit the living, spreading a virus that killed its host and brought them back to life as a new conscript in the undead army. The zombies multiply like rats, and humanity is doomed. It was a familiar fiction, and, and occasionally an organism in the real world uh, would be described as behaving in a similar manner, mostly parasites and fungi that perforate within the host, kill it, then assume control of the host's corpse. That all begged the question, was Dexter Grumon even a Digimon to begin with? So, excuse me, uh, I said at the beginning was... Uh, oh, I, I think I shifted the question. I transferred the question by accident. I started with if asking if Dexter Grumon uh, is a Digimon. Then I think I shifted that by accident to is he alive? I think the story has obviously said that Dex, uh, Doro Grumon is... Uh, I would rather Dexter Grumon is dead. It's just a zombie. It's a husk as I stated already right here. Um, but is it a Digimon to begin with? Because a typical Digimon, a natural Digimon, as the passage just points it out, uh, they're always going to have one Digicore. Yet through the use of Death X evolution, through this unnatural forced evolution, we now have a being that has multiple um, Digicores. This is kind of like uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, um, where the cre where, uh, Frankenstein, the doctor, creates the creature out of multiple parts of different people, except in this instance, the parts would be the Digicores themselves. Um, and then even in that story, the, the question is raised, uh, is the creature, is it a human being or is the creature another kind of uh, well, species now, right? So I think that's really cool. The fact that I'm thinking about classic literature like Shelley's Frankenstein, that just popped out while I was reading that right now. Uh, so <laughs> I think that's really cool. The fact that we're able to make that connection to uh, that other story. Um, and again, so uh, forgive me for saying, for changing the question by accident. So to reiterate, the question is not, is Dexter Grumon alive? No, they are dead. And Doru 
Guamon is now dead, unfortunately. But are they a Digimon? Doraguamon, yes, is a Digimon. But Dex Doraguamon, I'm about to say no. It's a it's an artificial thing created from the meddling of human beings. I know it's kind of ironic me saying artificial because I mean Digimon, digital monsters. <laughs> That's artificial life. Uh, but you guys know what I mean, right? I'm sure most of us, when we think of Digimon, we don't think of them as just AI, just code. I mean, that's like the equivalent of saying, oh, humans, it's just blood, blood and veins. I mean, that's a very uh, psychopathic way to think of humans, right? So <laughs> I'm going in a bit of a tangent. Hopefully, you guys know what I mean. But continuing forward, uh, Death X Evolution, as the name implies, is a disevolution in route to doubt, uh, to, to doubt, in route to death, Professor Rudgency said. At Dexter or Grumon quietly left the ground. Doromon's dying? Dexter Guman is not the Digimon closest to the source Digimon. The purest expression of Digivolution yet, Professor Ruginji shot it with twisted glee. With decrypted data from just one of the three sectors, Professor Ruginji was already closing in on the root cause of Digivolution, the source Digimon. The Digimon that waited at the end, he believed, of a long road of amassing ever more data and forcing countless Digivolutions. The Professor imagined that Death X, evolu the professor imagined that Death X Evolution brought one step closer to the source Digimon, an imitation of the very beginnings of digital life. If he was correct, then life was nothing more than a permanent state of death. So I'm not going to lie, I wanted to get this quote because I did want to discuss it and parse it out a little bit. I don't really know what to make of this too much, especially with this passage right here. Um, the Digimon that waited at the end, he believed, of a long road of amassing ever more data and forcing countless Digivolutions. To me, this says that the professor seems to believe that within the digital world, at the very end of the digital world's uh, life cycle, kind of like when our world, the earth will blow up one day, is this Digimon um, that's getting all the data from the other Digimon that have passed on and gathering, collecting that data. So essentially for the digital world, uh, once fate is to be eaten or rather absorbed or eaten by this Digimon at the end it kind of reminds me a little bit of like Warhammer 40k with Slanesh <laughs> and, the, and the Dukari anyways, but <laughs> um, well, What a mindset to have right? It'll be like someone saying that at the end of the human world There's going to be like a gaping maw that uh, will send you either to like the afterlife that you belong to or whatever it may be right um Professor Rujinji was already closing in on the root cause of digital evolution. So I, I understand the concept of the professor trying to manipulate and meddle with Digivolution, but his 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 interpretation of the source Digimon, um, the the so, so, so the source Digimon is what causes evolution. Uh, the Digimon that waited at the end, he believed, of a long road of amassing ever more data and forcing countless evolutions. Um, that's all. Again, to be frank with everyone, this is just the passage I wanted to share because if you guys have any perspectives or opinions about this passage, I would love to hear it myself. Um, maybe there's something that I'm missing. Um, but essentially for me, uh, what this passage is saying is that the professor wants to meddle with Digivolution. We get that. We understand that. But he wants to meddle with it because he believes that the source Digimon is what will be at the end of the digital world. Um, but also it's what began the digital world too. So I guess kind of like a digital version of like the Big Bang without the bang, obviously. <laughs> Instead of blowing up when it's just eating. Um, but yeah, anyways, continuing forward. Uh, and I guess the last thing about this quote, death x evolution, as the name implies, is a, di is a digivolution en route to death. So again, that line just for me, does that mean that the professor believes that digivolution rather than growth, the end state is death. I guess some has that kind of mindset in the real world too as well, like nihilistic mindsets where everyone is dying, we're all dying. <laughs> well, I'm, I might not die tomorrow, but my body is decaying technically every day. That's true for everyone, even from a, a five-year-old to a 15-year-old, 25, 35, 45, 55, and so forth, right? Every day our bodies are in state of dying. Thus, when we get older, our birthdays, we're not really celebrating another year of growing, but rather we're celebrating another year of of, uh, of surviving the decaying of our bodies. I mean, I know back then, like in high school and stuff, <laughs> one may probably knew people like that, even in college maybe. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess I could see that perspective, that point of view. <laughs> Moving forward, and I should note, I'm not even controlling the creature anymore, Dexter Grumon. The professor said in amazement, his video projection, projection holding its hands up away from the controls. E.G. and Leon couldn't believe their ears. 
I'm not sending a single command. Dexter Grumman is a completely um, autonomous program that follows its own instincts. I may as well be in a self-driving car. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Now then, EG, that just leaves me with the matter of the vaccine type for Yodomon and virus type Logomon. Once I've devoured the digicores, my work will be complete. The professor's master plan revealed itself to have Dexter Grumman simply consume the remaining prototype Digimon cores and function as an all-purpose prototype Digimon. Eliminate the need for cooperation, forced or otherwise. Then I'll finally be able to decrypt the remaining two-thirds of the data. Ah, oh, what a journey it's been. Perhaps this last part, at least, will go smoothly. Doroden, Dix Dorogomon, uh, Dorogomon shot it. It still had command of Dorogomon's attack, but the effect was completely different. Where Dorogomon's was a massive shockwave, Dex Dorogomon's was completely silent. Eiji turned to find that a section of the stone uh, circle completely vanished into thin air, as though it had been, uh, as though it never existed. Dexter Grumon erased part of the source domain with a single attack. Yuji felt a scream of terror building in the far reaches of his mind. This is real bad. It just vanished. Leon was also at a loss of words. Funeral Logomon and Kuchimon's godlike reflexes allowed him to evade the attack, but there was no guarantee to be able to do so again. <clears throat> and there was certainly no way to block it. So part of me, this quote sounded long, as if it's two parts. Uh, I won't lie, I did want to focus on the second part, but I felt like without the first half, the context wouldn't really all be there. <clears throat> so, what I like about the first half of the quote is just, again, emphasizing how the professor, he seems to know what he's doing, but the fact that he's happy that he can't control Dexter or Grumon, I think that's an indicator of how egotistical the professor is now getting at this point. Although he succeeded partially in part of his go, the fact that he can't control Dexter or Grumon, um, that should be a... A, uh, boy, a, a, a center of concern <clears throat> for the professor. Oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Let me drink some water. That was embarrassing. Sorry about that, everyone. <clears throat> Hopefully. I don't, I don't think I spit, but it felt like I almost did spit. So excuse me about that. <laughs> Again, I thank you for your patience. Um, As I was saying, um, uh, the professor... Yeah, so that should be a source of... Uh, of, uh, of concern for the professor. If he can't control Dexter or Grumon, who the whole purpose of it is to eat everything and to consume everything, what's to stop it from consuming him? <clears throat> for all we know, uh, now that he's creating this new type of being, this new kind of subspecies of Digimon, maybe it'll also consume things that's organic, not just art, um, artificial, AI, digital. So I think that's just an indicator of how crazy the professor is now getting. Or rather, how again, how egotistical, how into himself he's now become. This should be a factor that frightens him. Yet he's, he views it as a success. He views it as a win or as a detail that shows that he's on the right path. And I think that's just a little bit mental. <laughs> um, and the part that I did want to focus on itself is just going back to the whole cosmic heart, um, the Kraftian theme. I love how uh, <clears throat> Isuka commanded Dorogoma's attack, but the effect was completely different. Where Dorogomans was a massive shockwave, Dex Dorogomans was completely silent. So the absence of sound. Uh, again, when I first read that, for me, that was a little bit frightening just because what that attack is not a new attack. It's one that EG and Leon have witnessed before, but they're witnessing from a new source. Uh, it may not be a new attack, but the one who's delivering the attack is no longer the Digimon that they knew. Uh, I think compare, uh, uh, describing it as being completely silent, I think that's a great way of really highlighting how different Dexter Gurumon is to Dexter Gurumon. Um, and then the fact, of course, that this attack is able to make a piece of the source domain just completely vanish. I know I brought this up before, but it, that reminded me for sure of like the expanse in that station, uh, at least from the books. Um, and then the, uh, the two Digimon godlike references, uh, reflexes, excuse me, allow them to evade the attack, but that was no guarantee they'll be able to do so again. And there was certainly no way to block it. So essentially highlighting that if they're not able to dodge the attack, they will be erased. They will be eliminated. And they need to evade that attack. That's the oh, They need to rely on the reflexes in terms of reaction, uh, of movement. Because if they just rely on the reflexes in terms of, of defense, of raising their shield, of defending themselves, that's not going to do anything. They will be uh, vanished, just like the source domain. Uh, again, I just really like that. It really emphasizes the desperate measures that this team is in currently. Get out of here, E.G., Leon said sternly. What are you talking about, E.G. snapped. He wasn't about to let Leon sacrifice himself again. Think about it. 
If Dexter Grumont eats you in Funeral Logomon, Logomon, it's all over, Leon said matter-of-factly. That was the worst case scenario. Dexter Grumont ate all the three prototype Digimon, decided the rest of the source Digimon's data and had it uh, decoded the rest of the source Digimon's data and handed Professor Rudenji 100% of the source Digimon's power. Ryurimon was still restrained and unable to fight, which meant Eiji was the last line of defense. You're telling me to run, but I can't hear but you're telling me to run, but I can hear the fear in your voice, Eiji said in an accusatory tone. Leon flashed a pained grin. Dexter Gumon is scary. So is Professor Ruzenji, frankly. Leon. Leon had looked up to the professor uh, to the professor ever since he was a young boy, drawn in by Tomonari's professional charisma. As as his respect grew, however, so did so did to uh sorry everyone, let me drink some water and repeat that line. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> the as his respect grew, however, so too did fear take root in his heart. He had to muster many times the courage E.G. needed in order to stand up to the professor now, despite being Leon Alexander, the legendary hacker everyone knew as Judge. But I've made up my mind. You searched for me until you found me, so I'm going to fight for you, fight to protect you. Huh. Why decline? E.G. shouted. Freedom Logomon's first stood on end. What? I curled up in my futon and cried until I puked. Then I crawled back in the futon and cried some more. I'm not going to do that again. E.G. wished he could forget that period entirely. But strangely, though he never felt so dead inside at that moment, he was also filled with an intense desire to survive, to work through the pain and carry on living. Heh, <laughs> you cried for me, huh? Even so, I don't think it's wise for you to stay and fight. Shut your trap, Vrino Logomon said it themselves. Excuse me, everyone, that was a hiccup. Let me start that over. Shut your trap, Vrino Logomon said it themselves. We fought tooth and nail to come back, find, to come find you both, cause we're pals. I'm not gonna turn my back on you now. Pals, as in friends? Yeah. Even though it can be a pain. Fernando Logomon let out howl, let out a howl that shook the entire source domain. <clears throat> so I just want to quickly talk about from Digimon Adventure. One of my favorite instances where I realized that I appreciate Digimon uh, sub versus the dub is when I realized that the sub takes its story uh, much more seriously. So, minus borders, but I mean, the Digimon Adventure 1, I'm going to assume we've all seen that. <laughs> um, the part that this really reminds me of is when Tai and um, Yamato, Tai Chi and Yamato, they're, they're trying to fulfill that prophecy that, um, that um, oh no, I, I forgot his name, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, like, uh, Jedi, excuse me, Jedi. They're trying to fulfill that prophecy that Jedi had mentioned, the whole being shot by two angels, and they don't know for sure if being shot by Anjumon and Anjumomon will safely guarantee the next evolutionary step for um, Metal Greymon and for uh, uh, Metal Greymon and uh, War Gururumon. But Yamato and, Ma uh, Yamato and Taichi, they're able to take the risk because they believe in their friends, they believe in one another. In the subversion, um, in the subversion, Taichi actually holds Yamato's hand and he tells Yamato uh, he's holding his hand because he's afraid. And he needs courage. And then Yamato actually looks at Taichi and he says, Well, I'm glad that you hold my hand because I'm also afraid. And I'm going to need your courage as well. It's that element of teamwork. I thought that was really awesome. The fact that they we're both willing to admit that they were feeling fears. Uh, they were feeling the emotion of fear. I think that was very brave of them to do and to admit to one another. And here we have where not just E.G. and Leon. Um, well, mostly Leon admits that he's afraid. But we also have E.G. saying that he's cried, which is an extension of fear. He cried because of the loss that uh, that he believed that he uh, he cried because of the loss that he felt from losing Leon and Postman. And the fact that he's able to admit that, and I love how Leon doesn't mock him. He doesn't go, "Oh, you you cry, baby. <laughs> what are you, uh, some kind of little woman?" Right? He doesn't try to belittle E.G. or anything like that. It's just two friends who are acknowledging that they care about one another in the same way that Yamato and Taichi did so. And although there's no, uh, I would argue that although they're not, they're not, uh, they're not about to be shot by arrows, um, they're still in a really dangerous uh, 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 circumstance where uh, if they get hit by the attack from Dexter or Grumon, then that's it for them, right? So although they're not in the same dangerous situation, I just really love this connection uh, that we have between uh, E.G. and Leon into Yamato and Taichi. Or maybe that's just me because I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> I like Digimon a bit too much. Um, but yeah, but also what I like about this, give me a second. Of course, Funeral Logomon. I'm not gonna lie, when I first read this one portion, so before I get to that, I also love how Leon admits that he looked up to the professor, but as he continued looking up to him, the also fear started taking root. 
and now he can't really believe that he could overcome this fear. But then we have Eiji who goes, no. Uh, well, actually, despite that fear, we have Leon saying, you searched for me until you found me, so I'm going to fight for you, fight to protect you. Despite his fear, he's willing to push forward. That's a lot like how Eiji, right? Now, how he said that he was crying and laying in his futon crying. But yet, despite that, let me find that quote specifically. Uh, he wished he could forget that period entirely, but strangely, he never felt so dead inside of that moment. He was also filled with an intense desire to survive, to work through the pain and to carry on living. I would argue that this is why AG and Leon are such good mates, that even though one is a code cracker, the other is a hacker, uh, one was lost, the other one uh, had to regain his composure. Now we see an instance where Leon could lose himself in his fear and Eiji could choose to not remain uh, com remain with his composure, but they're both making the choice to push forward through their fear, to push forward through their anxiety. Um, that's awesome. I really love that. I love it when characters, despite their, uh, not shortcomings, but despite them being aware of possible shortcomings, they make the choice to overcome that. That's just like real life, right? Real life is not about always winning. Real life is about sometimes winning, but also sometimes losing, and then reflecting upon that loss and moving forward from there. Um, and then of course, Finn and Logo So I was worried at first that, let me see. Uh, I made up my mind, you searched for me until you found me, so I'm going to fight for you, fight to protect you. Huh, well I declined, E.G. shot it. Fernando Logomon's first stood on end. I was worried that maybe Fernando Logomon was like, hey, you, you're not speaking for me. Don't say that, E.G. <laughs> this person is saying, this individual is saying they'll fight for us. Let's get the hell out of here. But I love how the quote ends with, um, shut your trap. Uh, oh, you cried for me, huh? Even so, I don't think it's wise for you to stay and fight. Shut your trap, Funo Logomon said it themselves. We fought tooth and nail to come find you, because we're pals. I'm not going to turn my back on you now. Uh, powers and friends, yeah, even though it can be a pain. Funo Logomon let out a howl that shook the entire source to me. Um, as cheesy as it sounds, I thought that part did give me the chills. Even right now, I'm getting the chills a little bit. Really love it how Funo Logomon, again, at the beginning of the story, <laughs> it seems like he wouldn't care about community. But for no Logomon, Logomon just seems like the type of Digimon, the type of friend that you want to have on your side and they'll help you no matter what. Kind of like Fonzie. He kind of reminds me of the Fonz a little bit. Um, though I think from Happy Days. <laughs> I can't really explain that connection though. But anyways, but I just really like this quote passage because it highlights Leon's fear. It highlights E.G. was, uh, he had fear in the past, but they're both making the choice to overcome their fear and to work together as a team. Um... So we can be friends again, as long as you don't mind being stuck with me. I know it's not always easy. They turn to their target, Professor Tumanari Rosenji. I can't do it. I can't beat the professor. Leon, come on! Iji turned to look at Kuchiman in disbelief. After all they've been through, Leon had to be capable of defeating his mentor. The professor means the world to me. He made my life possible. But maybe with you here, I can muster the, I can muster the courage. You, Postmon, and Logomon. You overthink things too, don't you? Once a hacker, always a hacker, Leon said. Conflicted as he was, he knew he couldn't stand by and let someone play God. I get it. Us code crackers don't have it easy either. Listen, I know we're technically on different sides, but I believe in you, E.G. I believe in your connection to Logomon. Kuchumon reached out and touched the interface and funeral Logomon's forehead. Th that was the signal. Tens of thousands of lines of code flew between the two Digimon without either of them uttering a word. Uttering a word. We're committed to making our way in the digital world, Ichi replied, opening himself to Leon's feelings. You came and found me. Yeah, we did. Ichi had a part to play. The sense of connection, of finding one's own way in the digital world was everything to a code cracker. Ichi, I grant you our power. You've proven yourself to be a true code cracker and more than capable of ruling it. The Thunder God transformed into a massive blade of lightning. Fusion. So uh, there's two aspects of this quote that I really appreciate. So I think the, the first half goes in line to what I was explaining uh, with the previous quote. Uh, so despite Leon getting the courage uh, to move forward, he almost allows fear to get a, a, the better of him. I can't do it. I can't beat the professor. But he also sees that through EG, EG does have the will and the courage uh, to overcome uh, and defeat the professor. And Leon, despite him not wanting to, he also is able to recognize and see that in order to move forward, he's going to have to um, well, make a choice, either to fight the professor or not fight the professor. And the fact that, although one could argue, well, the fact that he became a sword, um, he's not really fighting, I would argue that that's a choice. The fact that he became a sword, uh, Leon is aware uh, that the best way to assist Eiji is not to actually fight with him because unfortunately 
he does have a little bit of that fear that I can't beat the professor, but rather to assist him, to support him. So I think that's still very much an act of agency. Um, kind of like, I guess, going back to Digimon Frontier, I know a lot of people didn't like the fact that the other characters, uh, compared to like the, the Frontier version of Yamato and Tai Chi, Matt and Tai, they will always be the one digivolving at the end. Um, I think the fact that the other uh, chosen children from that season, uh, they made the choice to give their spirit Digimon to the two leads. Um, that was a choice that they made. Um, that was not a choice that was being taken away from them. So although their capacity to fight was being removed, it was a choice that they made and it was their own agency to do that. So that's to a, a, a form of strength, even if it's not fighting uh, literally. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> So I love how Leon is able to recognize, and I also love how it's Leon who tells E.G. Um, let me see, let me find it. Listen, I know we're technically on different sides, but I believe in you, E.G. I believe in your connection to Logomon. I love that he says it because, again, it was him who was being so stubborn at the beginning of the story. The fact that E.G. was a code cracker. Uh, I mean, we mustn't forget that in Chapter 2, I believe, in e when Leon was back at his home, um... I believe it was that part where he was thinking about E.G. and he was thinking to himself that he really needs to save E.G. for himself. <laughs> uh, he really didn't believe anything positive came from being a code cracker. And we're seeing right here that Leon is able to put that mindset aside because he's seeing through E.G. what a code cracker can accomplish. And also what I like is that Leon's coming to understand that code crackers and hackers are just two sides of the same coin. Tartarus was not doing anything illicit. Um, he was just trying to save Saya through sometimes through unsavory means. But at least he wasn't killing or hurting people the way that other, like the X Nation was. And this line right here, um, you overthink things too, don't you? The fact that the two is used right here, uh, that's E.G. saying that to Leon. That's essentially E.G. telling Leon that I know what you're going through. I've done the same thing where I believe I know what I need to do. But unfortunately, I'm overthinking everything. And actually, a really good example about this would be when E.G. was in his futon and crying. It was Logomon who uh, gave the support that was needed to convince E.G. to continue pushing forward. Right? We mustn't forget about that. I would argue that if it wasn't for Logomon, E.G. would have really lost himself and um, not know what to do. But again, it was Logomon who encouraged E.G. to not just um, soak and mope around, but to try to figure out a way to find Leon and Postmon. So that line... You overthink things too, don't you? Again, it's really emphasizing how Leon and E.G., the reason why they used to be friends and why they'll be able to be friends after this is because they have a lot of common things, a lot of common mindsets that they share with one another, common ideologies. And again, I just really personally love that. Uh, so moving forward. So before I go forward, so I'm not going to lie, I am a little bit disappointed. <laughs> I was hoping that we'll get like the actual fusing Digimon, like Omnimon. Uh, but to my understanding, this is just Fino Logomon, but with uh, Kuochimon as a sword. Um, so although I'm, I'm a bit disappointed with the design, um, the symbolism behind, uh, or the symbolism and significance behind this evolution, this fusion evolution, um, I, I could still appreciate it because I like the, uh, the emotional impact of it. Uh, but the design of it, I do wish uh, it was an actual uh, new form of Digimon. And I think it would have been cool if like um, EG and Leon were not like inside the same Digicore. Or like to juxtapose... Uh, fusion evolution to death x evolution how despite uh uh Fino x Lug oh, he has a na name give me a second <laughs> um that's my cat give me a second oh i thought the name was right the name is present but it's, it's a little wrong i don't want to waste time looking for it uh but funeral logomon kochi sword uh that version um just to emphasize how compared to dexter or Gurumon, when it's done uh naturally when it's done through the correct means uh, one is able to combine and be a actual quote unquote Digimon, not be a non uh, Digimon, this new uh, uh, Digimon species that operates on death, uh, the way that Dexter or Gurumon does. So I do wish again, uh, like we had gotten a new form, like when um, Imperial Jumon as well, that's Stingmon and Vimon. Um, Omnimon, I really said that, but you guys know what I mean, right? So the fusion DNA evolution. But um, I think that would have been a great way to juxtapose. Um, Dexter or Grumon and the fusion Digimon of Leon and E.G. Postmon's Digicore unlocked a deep-seated memory of the Thunder God known as Tamakuachi, the first sumo wrestler and the God of Swords. It used this memory to transform itself into a sword another Digimon could wield. Kuchimon was one of the few mega-level Digimon capable of pulling off such a feat. The power of Tokuichima, excuse me, the power of Tokuichi of Takama Koichi, excuse me, 
for the pronunciation, is yours. Kochimon became the Thunder God's long sword and affixed itself to Glymphenir, the ropes that once bound the God Slayer Funeral Logomon. And that's a cool picture. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the picture does look cool. Uh, Funeral Logomon Takamuchi stood ready to do battle with the monster who dared to play God. Funeral Logomon. Uh, Final Logomon wielded a just and mighty blade, the pride and joy of the hacker Leon Alexander. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so <laughs> I actually just want to read from this passage just so because I personally was a little bit in disbelief. I was like, oh, what? He just became a sword and that's it? I thought this was going to be a DNA evolution, like an actual, uh, as I said, Omnimon and Imperial Jamon. Um, so I just wanted to read it just in case anyone didn't like, was in as much as disbelief as I was. <laughs> we have it straight from the narration. Um, that Kuchiman did become a sword. So again, just to reiterate, I like the symbolism behind it. I liked how we came to this point. I do just wish that the design was actually different. That uh, Fino Logomon and Kuchiman fused into one another with Leon and Niji inside their Digicore. Again, I think that would have been a really great way to compare and contrast Dexter Guruman to Fino Logomon uh, Tama Kama Ochi. Excuse me again for the pronunciation. Uh, so this is the last quote. This was it. Pale blue flame erupt to erupt. No, excuse me. <clears throat> Last quote. Let me make sure I do this correctly. And thank you for your patience. This was it. Pale blue flames erupted from Fernal Logomon's body. Oh shoot! Multiple warnings from Eiji's mind link timer washed over his virtual monitor. It was all or nothing now. This one attack, the full fury of fire and lightning combined, was their only chance. One strike for the living against a monster who would consume death in a futile attempt to evade it. The Digicore Predator, Predator followed its programming and grittily greeted the charging demon wolf with open arms. I shall consume you, all your abilities, your efforts, your dreams, your future, your life. Actually, let me read that line, excuse me, I, I added a plural by accident. I shall consume you, all your abilities, your efforts, your dreams, your future, your life. Professor Rujinji bellowed. Dexter Grumman's ten wings formed a massive maw and opened wide. Ready to swallow Funeral Logomon, I shall crush you. Shut up! The collected thoughts of Eiji, Leon, Funeral Logomon, and Kuchimon, the friendship, traveled faster than light. Ultimate Warblade Tamakoachi. Together, they spread their lives to the digital world and bound their wills together. This wasn't the end, it was merely the beginning. The sharpened blade struck the opening blow in a brand new story. The end. So that's how part 12 ends, or excuse me, that's how chapter 4, part 12 ends, or chapter 4 as a whole. I'm not going to lie, in the first time I read this, I was like, what? I was in the Digimon community looking at people's comments four weeks ago and everything dropped at once. And um, I did see some opinions how people felt like it was very abrupt, the ending. And I didn't want to spoil myself, so I, I just stopped reading people's comments there. And I, was like, and I told myself, let me just read the story uh, week by week. And I was really hopeful that... Well, it wasn't this erupt. The first time I read it, I was a little bit confused. But now that I read it the second and third time, to be honest with everyone, maybe this is just me coping. <laughs> but um, I actually really don't mind the way that it ends this way. Um, I think the whole purpose of the story was to tell us how the digital world allows one to uh, become who they want to be. Um, and it was very open-ended, the way that it started. Uh, why does one want to go into the digital world to become the foolish that they can't become? And how does it end? With two individuals now becoming fully who they can be, and they're going to change the digital world. Although we don't have a conclusion, a tangible conclusion, I think that we, the readers, could probably form our own conclusion. And I think depending on who we are as individuals, some of us might go, oh, well, obviously... I mean, Dexter or Grumon formed into a huge mom. They're going to be eaten. Professor Rujinji is going to win, and that's it. Or another individual could say, well, uh, Fiona Logomon Kuuchi uh, is going to overcome and best uh, the professor and Dexter or Grumon, and they're going to succeed. And they do succeed. How is that success going to look like? Um, more than likely, Koski and, um, well, I guess that would be really left open ended. Let me focus on the ones that I, I believe we can give conclusions to that Yolene. I will work with EG to remove Koski from the digital world, from their mind link, and they'll go back to the real world. There'll be no repercussions from the whole attack that began chapter four with the Sons of Chaos. Um, Hats, uh, uh, Satsuski 
uh, will not be reprimanded for quitting the Digiforce in case one forgot she needed to quit it, I believe, in order to use the uh, the, the secret weapon that the Digi Police had. She will probably be reinducted into the Digi Police and probably, maybe, hopefully, given a promotion. And EG and Leon, they might be able to form a new kind of label or a new kind of organization where it's no longer hackers versus code crackers, but hackers working, working, <laughs> hackers working with code crackers in order to accomplish whatever goals that they may have. The only conclusion that will be difficult to uh, to come up with will be Koski and Dormon, because obviously as it was mentioned multiple times that it's possible that Dormon was dying, that maybe he was dead, that Koski was obviously influenced by this uh, evol this death x evolution that Dormon went through, but. Maybe uh, with a positive mindset, through the act of uh, Fernando Logoman Teruchi um, destroying Dex Guru, Dex Guru Man, Dex, uh, excuse me, what? I'm sorry, um, Dex Guru Man, <laughs> sorry, Dex Guru Man, um, they were able to remove the abnormal digicores, reducing it back just to the correct one, which is supposed to be Doraman, and maybe he was a okay, he turned back into a Digitama. So again, I won't lie, this is me just really trying to cope with how this ending was abrupt. Uh, I do have a lot of um, excitement for the epilogue. I'm, I'm hopeful that the epilogue is really going to tie the story up well. Personally, I think the reason why I ended like this is because, and I'll talk more about this in my review for Digimon Seekers as a whole. So I'll definitely be doing a review for Chapter 4, but I'm probably going to reread everything before I do a review as a whole for Digimon Seekers. Because uh, it's been a whole year since I read part one, for example, right? Well, almost a whole year. So once the epilogue comes out, I'll make a video for that. And I'll do my review for chapter four. And then uh, soon after that, I'll do my review for Digimon Secrets as a whole. But one thing, one element I do want to talk about is just I think the reason why um, the story ends the way that it does is because the writers didn't know how to write action scenes. And um, I don't mean that in an offensive way. Um, if one's ever read books like Game of the Song of Ice and Fire, the series, um, The Expanse, or even like the Witcher series, um, it's they do those authors do a great job of describing the fighting scenes. Like for Geralt, for example, um, it really does feel more like Geralt is dancing around his foes and then he's actually just fighting them head on. The way that uh, his movement is described, the swing of his swords, the force of his swords, and how he's swinging it. Um, it's done really well. And I've I've noticed that with Digimon Seekers, there was not too many battles. There was a lot of dialogue, a lot of narration, but not too many battles. And the battles that we did get, I kind of noticed that, not that the story was trying to rush through it, but it was really much condensed compared to the rest of the story. It didn't really go into as much detail. I think maybe that occurred is because the writers may have not had um, much experience writing action. Because it is a difficult thing to do. I've written like short stories and stuff like that personally I'm, 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 uh, for creative writing. And it is hard to write action scenes. I think maybe if Digimon Seekers, if they em embrace the action part, because uh, action is part of the Digimon series. Uh, I personally am enjoying how there's less action and more narration, more dialogue. Uh, but sometimes action is needed, right? <clears throat> like for example, I do like The Legend of Heroes. I'm currently playing Trails into Rivery. Uh, but <clears throat> I can only talk to NPCs and go shopping for so long before I want to go out into the field and actually progress a story, move it forward, and level up my characters. Um, I think if the story had just rolled along with the acting scenes instead of trying to condense it, naturally the writers would have started getting experience to write those action scenes. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll go into more detail when I do my review for Digimon Seekers as a whole. Um, but... Was I disappointed with part 12? At first I was, yeah, but I was only disappointed because I did have expectations. I was really much enjoying the story. But now that I read it the second and third time, I'm not as disappointed. And I'm actually very much looking forward to the epilogue. And I believe the epilogue will confirm if my disappointment should remain. <laughs> or if the disappointment should dissipate and be replaced with like um, joy or something like that. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes sense. Thank you so much everyone for joining me on this cool little adventure. Um, this was my first time doing something new for Digimon. Um, a ghost game was out, but I was not watching it when it was coming out weekly. So, uh, this was really cool to experience. Pardon me in my hair. <laughs> I need to get a haircut. Anyways, but, um, this was a really cool experience. I, and I love this new format that Digimon did. I am hoping to continue to cover Digimon, especially with Digimon Liberator. I'm looking forward to what information we have about that. So that would be a new format as well. A web comic or some are calling it a, a manga, I suppose. Um... So that should be interesting. I'm really looking forward to that. 
And I do thank everyone who joined me either from chapter one or if you just joined in chapter four. I do really appreciate it, especially for those who engage with me uh, by leaving comments, uh, especially for those who helped me to get new perspectives. That's exactly why I wanted to have like discussions and conversations uh, through this YouTube channel. Um, but thank you so much, everyone. I hope you all have a prodigious day. My question for chapter four, part 12 is going to be, what do, you, do you have any expectations <clears throat> for the epilogue? Are you hoping that um, the story will be concluded in a neat way? Or are you worried that in the same way that part 12 ended so abruptly, the epilogue will also end abruptly? I do have faith in the writers um, at Bandai Namco. And I'm going to be positive and hope uh, that when March 9th comes around, uh, the epilogue is really going to make Digimon Seekers, at least for me personally, possibly maybe the top three Digimon, uh, the Digimon properties. Uh, but we'll see uh, when March 9th comes around. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate it. Have a prodigious day and take care, everyone.